हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल ज्ञान कल्याण इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ पीएच इन आवर लाइफ एंड स्टार्टेड द टॉपिक सॉल्ट्स आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सॉल्ट्स एंड केमिकल्स ऑप्टेन्ड फ्रॉम कॉमन सॉल्ट दैट इज सोडियम क्लोराइड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल कंटिन्यू विद more chemicals obtained from salt and discuss about some questions and answer related to this chapter so let us start with the chemical compound bleaching powder most of us have heard about bleaching powder bleaching powder is calcium oxychloride so bleaching powder the chemical name of bleaching powder is calcium oxychloride or calcium hypochlorite and the chemical formula of bleaching chloride is caocl2 let us see the preparation bleaching powder is prepared by passing chlorine gas over dry slaked lime so chlorine gas is passed over dry slaked lime and slaked lime is uh, calcium hydroxide so chlorine gas is passed over calcium hydroxide to produce calcium oxychloride which is the bleaching powder so where does the chlorine gas comes from it can be obtained in the previous reaction which we have studied during the preparation of sodium hydroxide so electrolysis of sodium chloride gives sodium hydroxide along with chlorine gas and hydrogen gas so this gas this chlorine gas is used to produce calcium oxychloride the chlorine gas is passed over calcium hydroxide and calcium oxychloride is formed so this is the preparation of bleaching powder you can see the chemical equation caoh whole 2 which is the calcium hydroxide reacts with chlorine to form caocl2 that is the calcium oxychloride or the bleaching powder so bleaching powder is a white powder which gives a strong smell of chlorine so the real bleaching agent which is present in bleaching powder is the chlorine and the bleaching action of chlorine is due to its oxidizing properties so bleaching powder is soluble in cold water and it gives a strong smell of chlorine now let us see some uses of bleaching powder bleaching powder is used for bleaching cotton and linen in textile industry and for bleaching wood pulp in paper industry so it is used for bleaching cotton and linen in the industries and it is also used for bleaching washed clothes in the laundries okay bleaching powder is used for disinfecting drinking water supply making it free from germs so water is basically this infected by addition of bleaching powder to it bleaching powder is used for the manufacture of chloroform it is used as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries so these are the uses of bleaching powder so next comes baking soda so the soda which is commonly used in the kitchen for making crispy pakoras or snacks is the baking soda so most of you might be familiar to this name baking soda so the chemical name of baking soda is sodium hydrogen carbonate and the chemical formula of baking soda is nahco3 so the baking soda is added for faster cooking of food it is also added for faster cooking of food and to make the snacks crispy baking soda is added to them okay so now we will see how it is produced sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda is produced on a large scale by reacting a cold and concentrated solution of sodium chloride with ammonia and carbon dioxide so a cold and concentrated solution of sodium chloride nacl is treated with ammonia and carbon dioxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate is formed along with ammonium chloride so you can see the chemical equation 
that is NaCl plus NH3 that is sodium chloride plus ammonia water and carbon dioxide gives NaHCO3 that is the baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate and NH4Cl is the ammonium chloride. So this is the reaction for the preparation of sodium hydrogen carbonate which is commonly known as baking soda. Sodium hydrogen carbonate consists of white crystals which are sparingly soluble in water. So sodium carbonate, hydrogen carbonate consists of white crystals and they are sparingly soluble in water. Sparingly soluble means that the salt will not get completely dissolved in water. So when sodium hydrogen carbonate is dissolved in water, some of it will remain undissolved in water and as it has a lower solubility, it is said to be sparingly soluble in water. So sodium hydrogen carbonate is a mild and it is a non-corrosive base. Okay, so now we will read about the uses of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is used as an antacid in medicine to remove acidity of the stomach. So it is used as an antacid. Antacids are the basis which neutralizes the effect of acids produced in our stomach. If the acid produced is an excess amount, then antacids are added to neutralize the excess acid produced and it will give relief to the stomach and will cure indigestion. So, sodium hydrogen carbonate as it is the base, it is used as an antacid in medicine to cure indigestion so that it neutralizes the excess amount of acids present. Again, we have sodium hydrogen carbonate is used in making baking powder. So, baking powder is used in making of cake, bread, etc. It is a mixture of baking soda and tartaric acid. So, tartaric acid is a mild edible acid which is added with baking soda to form baking powder. So, baking powder is again a very useful ingredient in making of cakes. So, what happens is that when the baking powder is mixed with water, while making the dough for cake or bread, when the baking powder is mixed with water, the sodium hydrogen carbonate will react with the tartaric acid to evolve carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide gas gets trapped and bubbles will come out slowly and the cake will start rising. And it will become soft and spongy. So if the baking powder is not added in the preparation of cake or the bread, then the cake will be hard and it will be small in size. That is, it will not rise up. So that's why the baking powder is added in the preparation of cake. Baking soda is used in fire extinguisher. So these were some of the uses of baking soda comes washing soda. So washing soda is sodium carbonate containing molecules of water of crystallization. So for this, for understanding what is water of crystallization, I think we should first read about the topic that is water of crystallization. So I will continue this washing soda after I complete the explanation for what is water of crystallization. Okay. So, what is water of crystalliza crystallization? So, there are some salts which contain a few water molecules in them and the, those water molecules are the essential part of those, the crystal structure, the crystal structure of the salt. So, there are some salts which contain a few water molecules as an essential part of their crystal structure. The water molecules which form part of the structure of a crystal of a salt are called water of crystallization. So, these water molecules which form the part of that of the crystal structure of the salt 
is known as water of crystallization so the salts which contain water of crystallization are called the hydrated salts so let us stay look at the example copper sulfate crystals contain five molecules of water of crystallization in one formula unit and hence written as CuSO4.5H2O it is called copper sulfate pentahydrate so copper sulfate crystals contain five molecules of water and uh, as and as it is written as CuSO4.5H2O that means 5 molecules of water. So what copper sulfate is, can be known as uh, copper sulfate pentahydrate. Okay next is sodium carbonate crystals. Sodium carbonate crystals contain 10 molecules of water of crystallization per unit formula and hence written as Na2CO3.10H2O. So it is also called as sodium carbonate decahydrate deca stands for 10 water molecules so 10 molecules of water of crystallization per unit formula of sodium carbonate crystal is known as sodium carbonate decahydrate okay calcium sulfate crystals contain two molecules of water of crystallization in one formula unit and hence written as caso4.2 h2o so dihydrate stands for two molecules of water of crystallization the water of crystallization is the part of crystal structure of a salt okay it is a part of crystal structure of a salt since water of crystallization is not free water it does not wet the salt so the salts which contain water of crystallization are wet okay they are dry so this water is not free water therefore the salts containing water of crystallization appears to be perfectly dry the water of crystallization gives the crystals of the salts their shape and in some cases imparts them color. So the water of crystallization is responsible for the shape and the color of the salts. The presence of water of crystallization in copper sulfate crystals imparts them blue color. So due to the presence of water of crystallization in copper sulfate, the crystals have blue color. The presence of water of crystallization in iron sulfate crystals imparts them a green color. So this is how the water of crystallization will give the crystals their shape and color. So now we again come back to washing soda. Now if I say that uh, washing soda is sodium carbonate containing molecules of water of crystallization then you will understand that the formula of washing soda is written as Na2CO3.10H2O means the salt contains 10 molecules of water of crystallization okay washing soda is produced from sodium chloride in the following steps so let us see how washing soda is produced a cold and concentrated solution of sodium chloride is reacted with ammonia and carbon dioxide to obtain sodium hydrogen carbonate so first of all a concentrated and a cold solution of sodium chloride is made to react with ammonia and carbon dioxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate along with ammonium chloride is obtained. So again the sodium hydrogen carbonate which we have obtained from the above step is separated out uh, by filtration and it is dried and again heated. So on heating the sodium hydrogen carbonate gets decomposed to form sodium carbonate and this sodium carbonate is the anhydrous sodium carbonate that means it does not contain any molecules of waters of crystallization. Okay so this is the sodium carbonate uh, which is also known as uh, soda ash okay the reaction you can see so this anhydrous sodium carbonate is dissolved in water and recrystallized to get washing soda crystals containing 10 molecules of water of crystallization so washing soda crystals are obtained by the recrystallization of the anhydrous sodium carbonate when it is dissolved in water it is again recrystallized and then we get the washing soda crystals so this is the reaction for the preparation of washing soda from sodium chloride now let us see the uses of washing soda sodium carbonate or washing soda is used in glass soap and paper industries okay again it is used in the manufacture of sodium compounds such as borax 
Sodium carbonate can be used as a cleaning agent for domestic purposes and it is used for removing permanent hardness of water. So these were some of the uses of washing soda. So a new topic and the last one with which we will end this chapter that is plaster of Paris. So what is plaster of Paris? It is calcium sulfate hemihydrate or calcium sulfate half hydrate you can see in the formula of plaster of paris caso4 dot half h2o that is half molecule of water so that's why it is called calcium sulfate hemihydrate so the name plaster of paris comes from the fact that it was mainly found in paris at first it was mainly found in paris okay and it has a lot of uses let us see its preparation plaster of paris is prepared from gypsum so it is prepared from gypsum and what is gypsum it is calcium sulfate dihydrate so calcium sulfate dihydrate that means two molecules of water caso4 dot 2 h2o is the gypsum which is used for the preparation of plaster of paris plaster of paris is prepared by heating gypsum to a temperature of 100 degrees celsius when heated it loses three-fourths of its water of crystallization and forms plaster of paris so what happens is that three-fourth of the water of crystallization is lost when it is heated when gypsum is heated and it forms plaster of paris so you can see in the chemical equation caso4 dot 2 h2o gives on heating gives uh, caso4 dot half h2o plus one half of water molecule so this is the equation the chemical equation for the preparation of plaster of paris in the formula of plaster of paris you can see in the above equation is that it is shown only half a water molecule so it is not possible uh, it is half a water molecule does not exist so the formula is written in that way it actually means that two molecules of caso4 shares one molecule of water so that the effective water of crystallization for one caso4 unit comes to half molecule of water so one unit of caso4 will sh sh uh, have half molecule of water and if it is two molecules of CSO4 then they will share a single water molecule so that's why the uh, equation is written in that form okay uh, now we will see its uses plaster of Paris is used for making toys materials for decoration and for making surfaces smooth so there is a very important use of plaster of paris it is used in hospitals for setting fractured bones in the right position to ensure correct healing so plaster of paris is used when some accidents happen and uh, a person ha gets fracture in his bones so plaster of paris is applied on that particular area so that the bone get again set in the right position so what happens is that uh, when plaster of paris is mixed with a proper quantity of water and applied around the fractured limb it sets into a hard mass okay and it keeps the bone joints in a fixed position that that's why plaster of paris is used in hospitals for setting fractured bones in the right position so this was about plaster of paris okay so now i will try to discuss some of the questions related to this chapter okay given in the book uh, i will not cover all the questions okay i will not discuss all the questions given in the book i would request you all to try them and if you have any problem or doubt regarding any topic or any question you are free to f ask ask in the group there is a whatsapp group which is specifically made for the students and you without feeling any hesitation you can ask your doubts we will try our best to clear your doubts and help you so if you have any doubt or if you want any answer then you can ask in the whatsapp group okay so let us start
The first question. You have been provided with three test tubes. One of them contains distilled water and the other two contains an acidic solution and a basic solution respectively. If you are given only red litmus paper, how will you identify the contents of each test tubes? Okay. So if you have been provided with three test tubes, each containing an acidic basic and a distilled water solution. So, uh, and if you're only provided with a red litmus paper, what will you do to identify each of the contents present in the three test tubes? Okay. So first of all, we will, we have, sh we should have a proper knowledge about litmus paper. How the color changes take place both in basic and acidic solutions of course in the neutral one too so first of all as we have studied earlier that basic solutions will turn red litmus paper to blue so as we have been given the red litmus paper so we will try to do that first okay so first of all uh, you have to dip that red litmus paper in each of the three test tubes one by one so that the, the test tube which will turn the red litmus paper blue will be the basic one basic solution so as the red litmus will turn to blue now you can use this blue litmus paper to check for the acidic solution so the rest two are also tested okay when you dip the red uh, blue litmus paper then you will if the color changes from blue to red then you will be sure that it is a is it is an acidic solution and the solution which will not make the litmus paper change its color so that will be the distilled water that is it will be the neutral solution so this is how we can identify the three contents using only one colored litmus paper i think it's clear to you okay let us move forward to the next why should curd and sir substances not be kept in brass and copper vessels Okay, so I guess I have studied about, I have said about this when uh, we were discussing about the properties of acids, how acids react with metals. Okay, so it is always advised to keep the food substances which are, which contain acids in them. We are advised not to keep them in any kind of a metal vessel. Why? Because the acid which is present in the food substance will react with the metal of the vessel Consequently, forming some of the harmful metal compounds which are very harmful and they will cause food poisoning. So it is always advised to not keep the food substances like curd or any sour substance like um, lemon juice or any orange juice because they contain acids in them. So we are advised not to keep them in the metal vessels. Okay. The next is, which gas is usually liberated when an acid reacts with the metal? I guess you know it is the hydrogen gas. Illustrate with an example, how will you test for the presence of this gas? So we have to perform an experiment. We have to show how this gas is, how we will say that this particular gas is present, okay? When an acid reacts with the metal. So hydrogen gas is usually liberated when an acid reacts with the metal, we know that. So now we can perform an experiment to test for the presence of the hydrogen gas okay so we can show the reaction between dilute sulfuric acid and zinc granules so we will have the sulfuric acid to be our acid and the metal will be the zinc so if they both will react and the formation of hydrogen gas will be seen so the first step let us take a few pieces of zinc granules in a boiling tube and add about 5 milliliter of dilute sulfuric acid to it. So, a few pieces of zinc granules in is taken in a boiling tube and we will add 5 milliliter of dilute sulfuric acid to it. Then we will see the formation of gas bubbles on the surface of the zinc granules. Okay. Then a ga the gas is being is passed through the soap solution taken in a trough. It's like a vessel which uh, is filled with soap solution and the gas is being passed through that soap solution and gas filled bubbles are formed in the soap solution which rise into the air. We will see that uh, gas filled bubbles are 
formed in the soap solution. So if a burning candle is brought near a gas filled soap bubble, the gas present in soap bubble burns with a pop sound. So a burning candle is brought nearer to that gas filled soap bubble and the gas present in soap will burn out with a pop sound and the pop sound is of the hydrogen gas because we should know that hydrogen gas burns making a pop sound only hydrogen get gas burns making a pop sound this shows that hydrogen gas is evolved in the reaction of dilute sulfuric acid with zinc metal so this is the diagram you can see here the hydrogen gas bubbles okay in the test tube it is taken you can see the bubbles and first of all this is the test tube zinc granules you can see at the bottom and uh, dilute sulfuric acid is added which will produce the gas then uh, this is the trough in which the soap solution is present if you bring that gas near the soap solution you will see bubbles coming out then uh, if you bring a burning candle near it it will burn with a pop sound and this pop sound is of the hydrogen gas next question metal compound a reacts with dilute sulfur hydrochloric acid to produce effervescence the gas evolved extinguishes a burning candle write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction if one of the compounds formed is calcium chloride okay so you have been given a metal compound whose name is not revealed as a and it will react with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce effervescence okay and the gas evolved extinguishes the burning candle so the gas which is evolved there it will extinguish a burning candle so we have to write the chemical balanced chemical equation and if the one of the compounds is what calcium chloride so carbon dioxide is the gas we know that carbon dioxide is capable of extinguishing a burning candle so the gas will be carbon dioxide and we know when carbon dioxide is formed generally when uh, an acid reacts with metal carbonate or metal hydrogen carbonate carbon dioxide gas is evolved along with the formation of salt and water so a metal carbonate or a metal hydrogen carbonate will react with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce effervescence if calcium chloride is formed then it has to be either calcium carbonate or calcium hydrogen carbonate so it is calcium carbonate okay it is not calcium hydrogen carbonate it cannot be calcium ca hydrogen carbonate because uh, it can uh, hydrogen calcium hydrogen carbonate is found only in solutions and it is very stable unstable to exist as a solid so it will be the metal compound will be the calcium carbonate and this calcium carbonate will react with hydrochloric acid to form car calcium chloride along with carbon dioxide and water you can see the chemical equation okay next question why do hcl hno3 etc that is hydrochloric acid nitric acid etc show acidic characters in aqueous solutions while solutions of compounds like alcohol and glucose do not show acidic character okay so we know that acidic character is due to the presence of hydrogen ions when the acidic solutions are dissolved in water when the acids are dissolved in water then it produces hydrogen ions due to which they get the acidic character so when hcl hno3 is dissolved in water they produce hydrogen ions and due to the presence of hydrogen ions they show acidic character but the solutions com of compounds like uh, alcohol and glucose they do not show acidic character because their hydrogens do not get separate out when they are dissolved in water they do have hydrogen ions but they do not get separate out when dissolved in water in other words the hydrogen containing glucose or alcohol compounds do not behave as acids because they will not dissociate to produce hydrogen ions in water so it is due to the separation of hydrogen ions the acid acid solutions like hcl and uh, ni nitric acid will show acidic character okay the next question and the last one why does distilled water does not conduct electricity whereas rain water does okay 
So here also ions will play a important role for the conduction of electricity. So ions are responsible for the conduction of electricity. So distilled water does not contain any ionic compounds in them. So generally the water is demineralized. No minerals are present in distilled water. So due to the absence of any kind of ionic compounds such as acids or base or any kind of ionic compounds, they conduct, they do not conduct any, they do not conduct electricity. Whereas when rainwater Whereas rainwater conduct electricity, it is because when rainwater falls to, on the earth, it comes to the atmosphere and we know what so many kinds of gases are present in the atmosphere. So the rain, the gases gets dissolved in the water, in the rainwater, such as the carbon dioxide gas, when it gets dissolved, it forms carbonic acid. As carbonic acid provides ions to the rainwater, so rainwater can conduct electricity. So there are other gases present such as sulfur dioxide, okay. So when those gases gets dissolved in the rainwater, it get the ions and it will conduct electricity. So this was about the some of the questions from this chapter. I would like you to go thoroughly the whole of the chapter and uh, if you have any doubt, please share it with us. Thank you for watching. I will come up with a new lesson very soon.